Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you a bunch of different very simple but effective drills that are going to work on your passing and receiving which are two of the most essential skills needed to play football at any level. Even goalkeepers need to have a good quality first touch and be able to distribute the ball. It's all well and good having all these fancy skill moves but if you can't actually control and distribute the ball you're not going to be a very effective player. So this one's for all of you players out there, doesn't matter what your position is. All you need to complete all of these drills is a wall and a ball. I'm going to use a cone for a couple of the drills but you don't have to have them, you just need to find a wall. You don't have to be on a pitch like this that has a wall, just find any wall whether it's inside your house, down the park, wherever it may be, find a wall and a ball and that's all you need to complete all of these drills. But without further ado, let's get into the first drill. Drill number one is the two-touch passing drill, covering all the basic elements of passing and receiving. So this is a great place to start with just using the inside of our feet at all times, one to play the ball along the ground, then as it rebounds off of the wall, we're alternating our feet to control the ball with the inside of our opposite foot. Working on that weight of pass, rolling it nice and easy, clean first touch to set us up for our second touch, which is to pass the ball once again. Drill number two is the one touch passing drill, covering another key component of the game, which is being able to pass the ball first time without taking a touch. You'll see at the top level, a lot of the professionals are taking one or two touches maximum, but it allows you to increase your speed of play if you're able to pass the ball first time. So exactly like the first drill, but instead of taking a touch in between each pass, we're locking our ankle, focusing on that ball and punching it back to the wall with conviction, making sure we're getting over the ball so it doesn't pop up. Drill three is the sole control, working on receiving the ball with the underside of the foot. More commonly a technique used in futsal because you really want to keep that tight control but you do often see it in the outdoor game when you've got tight pressure and you need to keep the ball as close to the foot as possible. So we're punching the ball in as we have been doing, this time just working on a bit of timing and coordination to place our foot on top of the ball while it's rolling without letting it roll underneath our foot. Drill number four is the sole roll pass. Very similar to the sole control, but this time instead of rolling the ball out in front of us and then passing the ball, we're rolling it across our body. So this is a good alternative if there's a defender rushing in at full speed, you can simply roll the ball past them and make your next move. It's a great one from getting out of pressure. Drill number five is the open body touch. This is a great skill to have, especially if you're a winger. Receiving the ball with your first touch and taking it down the line, it's just gonna set you up and give you a time and speed advantage. So all we're doing is punching the ball in, and then we're turning our body 90 degrees, opening up our hips, and then pushing the ball with the inside of a foot in the direction we want to go. So it's almost like we're taking a little pass out in front of us, and then returning it to the wall with our next touch. Number six is the across body touch. Another great skill if there's a defender coming in and pressuring you really quickly, if you can take the touch away from them, you're just gonna give yourself valuable time and space in order to make your next move. So we're just punching the ball into the wall and this time using the inside of our foot, we're just clipping the ball to the inside and passing it with our next touch. So really working on the weight of that first touch to get it across our body, but not so heavy that it gets away from us. Number seven is the outside foot touch. So very similar to the directional first touch, but we're just using the outside of our foot. So we can add a little bit more deceptiveness when that ball's coming in, making it look like you're gonna to touch it with the inside of the foot, but then you push the ball to the opposite way with the outside of our foot as well. Another great one when the defender's rushing in trying to take that ball away from you, if you can knock it by them, it's just gonna give you those valuable seconds in order to make your next move.
Number 8 is the Cruyff Touch, another directional one but this time adding even more deceptiveness. So you're coming in and making it look like you're going to receive that ball with the inside of your foot but then you hook it behind your standing leg. So again you're using the inside of the foot to make that directional first touch but you're planting one leg down to disguise it and protect the ball. It takes a little bit of coordination but a very effective move for getting away from defenders. Number nine is the inside turn. So we're adding a different dynamic to our drills now. So what we've done is we've put the cone behind us to act like it's a defender. Then as we receive that ball, we're turning away. So if you can receive the ball and turn with your first touch, a lot of the defenders come in pretty high pressure and they'll be off balance if you can turn nice and sharply. So we're using the inside of our foot to wrap it around the ball and take the ball to either side. Good to work on both feet, trying to get an equal amount of reps with your right foot and your left foot. Number 10 is the outside turn. Another good one for when you have a defender on your back and you want to get away from them with your first touch. So we're punching that ball in, this time taking it with the outside of our foot diagonally and then accelerating immediately, turning back and repeating on the opposite side, trying to get an equal amount of reps with the right foot and the left foot. Drill 11 is 1-2s, a really good drill for working on those combination plays in tight areas. So what we're doing is playing the ball off the wall at an angle, continuing our run and receiving the ball on the opposite side. You'll see teams like Barcelona, Real Madrid, they're playing these small combinations all the time. So after they've passed the ball, they're moving into a new space and that's going to make you more effective on the pitch. If you can stay on the move after you've passed the ball and get into a new space, you're going to be very hard to mark. Drill 12 is weighted passes, so we're punching that ball into the wall nice and firm and then we're following after it and then followed by another first time pass immediately after. And once we get close enough to the wall we can start backpedaling again so that we have to increase the speed of our passing. So we're continually adjusting to the weight of the ball, having to soften it as we get close to the wall and having to increase the speed of the pass as we get further away. A really great drill that applies to the game. Drill 13 is wall juggles, so all we're doing is juggling the ball, kicking it against the wall and then keeping it up in the air as it returns to us. So just working on a bit of aerial first touch, there isn't a touch limit with this, so just keeping the ball up as it comes back to you, you can take as many touches as you need, keeping it up in the air and then popping it back against the wall once again. Drill 14 is two touch wall juggles. So now we're trying to be a bit more efficient with our touches and gain even more control. So the key with this one is to pop it against the wall and take one touch to set yourself and the second touch plays it back against the wall. So you need to be a bit more accurate with your touches. There's a lot less room for error. So it really challenges you.
And drill 15 is one touch wall juggles. So we're challenging ourselves even further to be more precise with our touches and we only get one touch this time. So we pop it against the wall, then our next touch immediately pops it back against the wall. You wanna see how long you can go for this one by keeping up with one touch.